Hello again and welcome. This is Michael Pizzola. I'd like to welcome you to this edition of the Breeders' Cup Video Rant. This is the 2013 edition. It seems like only yesterday I was talking to you about the 2013 Triple Crown races. And what I want to do today is take you to the computer and have you look over my shoulder as I work through the races. Now, I will be using Blackmagic, the ultimate handicapper software, but I want you to know it doesn't matter what numbers you use, what software you use, what quote unquote school of handicapping you are from, because the principles that I want to talk to you about while we go through these races are universal. Okay? It comes down to a very, very simple concept, okay? that horses that you like that the public should not like and let the bet make you. Now, there's a lot to that, but that's the basics. Now, I've gotten some emails saying, Michael, a little less philosophy, a little more races. So, okay, so we're going to get right to it. But I do want to make three points. Number one, I am doing this on October 30th. It is the Wednesday before the Friday of Breeders' Cup. So I don't have all the complete cards. I don't have uh, all the scratches, obviously track conditions and so forth. So I'm working with what I have. And the point is that the outcome of these races, it's not that important. Sure, we all like to win and, you know, especially if it's on Breeders' Cup or Kentucky Derby or a big day, but the lessons you can learn can be worth much more than anything you make on any individual race. Second, I talk a lot about random and what does that mean? So if you are using an odds line, and I'll be using the Black Magic Ultimate Handicapper odds line, it will assign an odds to a horse. Now, if you have a horse that you have assigned the odds of, let's say, seven to one, okay, um, that means if the race is run eight times, the horse wins once. Okay. That's an odds line. Random means if there are 10 horses in the race, the odds of any one horse winning randomly is 9 to 1. Why 9 to 1? Why not 10 to 1? Well, one horse is going to win the race out of the 10 horses. So there's one positive result, nine negative results. So that's nine negatives against one positive, 9 to 1. So in some of these races, you'll see that if there are only six horses in a race, random is five to one. The Black Magic Handicapper will draw a line, a thick red line, or any color you want, you can customize it. Uh, the horses above are above random, the horses below are below random. And it's kind of tricky to go below that random line because for win anyway, not talking about exotics, because then you, are, you, you haven't made a distinction that's any better than spinning a wheel or flipping a coin, okay? So the third point that I want to make is to not let a big day cause you to throw away your biggest advantage. The biggest advantage you have in this game is that you don't have to bet every race. A blackjack player gets dealt cards, his money is up already, he has to play that whether he gets dealt a 14 or a 17, I don't even know, if, I'm not that good at blackjack, okay? Or he gets dealt a 21, he's got to play it. Same thing with poker. You can't say, oh geez, I've got a seven and a two, can I have my ante back? No. But in horse racing, you get to choose. You get to wait until everything is right, as Ray Talbot would say, and the price is right as well. Don't throw that away just because it's Breeders' Cup. And for that matter, just because it's Kentucky Derby or it's Belmont Stakes or Preakness or any of the big races or, hey, it's Saturday and it's my day off and I get to bet, whatever. Don't give that away. Wait until the opportunities present themselves. It's a horse you like that the public shouldn't. And then you get a sense of the bet making you, a sense of internal, ah, yes, this one. Okay? So with that in mind, I'd like now to take you to the computer, I'd like you to look over my shoulder and I'll show you the exact uh, way that I work 
uh, going through the races, and we'll go through Breeders' Cup Day, and I'll show you a couple of races, Breeders' Cup both days, actually, and I'll show you a couple of races that I like from a couple of the undercards. So come along, and let's get to work. Okay, so this is the look over my shoulder part of the 2013 Breeders' Cup video rant. And I'm just going to go through this the way I would do as much as possible if I were value capping, um, just looking at my computer with you looking over my shoulder. Uh, I'm not going to make any excuses for passing a lot of these races because there are just too many unknowns. For example, here we are November 1st, Santa Anita 6th race. First of all, this is the marathon. Uh, it's a mile and three quarters for a pace handicapper. And a lot of the master, you know, obviously the master pace numbers are called master pace because, well, <laughs> they're pace numbers. And they're not very reliable once you get, you know, past a mile and three sixteenths. So um, in this race, not only is it a mile and three sixteenths, there are a number of unknown horses. London Bridge has never started in the U.S., uh, Ever Ryder, one of the morning line favorites, and so forth. So I just go right past that. In the seventh race at Santa Anita, November 1st, it's the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. And we have the same situation there with a bunch of um, unknown horses. So Giovanni Boldini, you got to love that name, but seven to two, three starts, two wins, none in the United States, no numbers. Same with Shamson. I am done. Next, the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. Now, here is a possibility. Okay, remember I talked to you a little bit about, in the introduction, about random and all of that. So, there are six horses above random. And the top horse is rated as seven to one. Okay, now it does have a positive, what I call a value tech ratio. Seven to one in the odds, 12 to one in the contention. That's good because it means that I like the horse better than the public should. Okay, that's a good thing. This is a numerical expression of that. A couple of issues I have. One, uh, one good thing is there's a gap from the 7 to 1 down to 9 to 1. But the, the issue I have is that it's 7 to 1. That means if they ran the race eight times, this horse will win once. So boy, oh boy, I would really need a very large overlay. The other thing is if we look... Actually, the formula in the software went back and took some uh, race from Uruguay. And I'm not too concerned about that because that number was a 175. Uh, it's got 172 at Parks. But I'm going to need to offset all of those things I just to told you about. Very high odds, 15 to 20 to 1. And I would take a speculative bet on it. In the ninth race... The juvenile Phillies turf. We have that same situation with all of these unknowns. Okay, remember we get to choose which hands we ante up into. Okay, so um, the uh, the tenth race. Actually, I am a little interested in this race. This is um, uh, this is approachable. There are three. This uh, this thick red line is the random line. There are only three horses above random. And the favorite in the race, the eight to five shot Royal Delta, you know, has just been winning and winning, but it just had a very, very hard race. Now, if it's a champion, it, it will be able to um, recover from that and run well. Uh, not much to say about Close Hatches just won a nice grade one at Parks. But there's a horse coming out of that race, Street Girl, that only missed by two lengths, coming out of the very same race as Close Hatches. 30 to 1 morning line in a short field. Um, you know, there's not that much difference between their last races. I would take at any kind of decent price uh, a bet on Street Girl. I'll also play an exacto with the three box and also play a straight one three exact as well probably take the rest of the horses over the one just to cover the win bet that's using an exacta as a place bet and again i emphasize looking at the undercards let me show you one race now again i'm recording this on wednesday uh the 30th of october before the um uh 
before scratches, before a lot of the cards are even complete. So I haven't looked at them all, but here's a race from Mountaineer. Uh, the eighth race at Mountaineer. I'm a little interested in this only because I think there might be a potential of a large price. It's an arc four. This is a very kind of weak line, four to one, nine to two, nine to two, six to one. Um, so pretty much fair game. The top three horses are all not only favorites, but if you look at the this last horse, Flash a Smile, it came back after a layoff, didn't do very much at all. Uh, me so bad. That's a terrible pun, but okay. You, I've never had a bad cup of miso soup, but <laughs> so, um, the that's a very even though this is a cl bit of a closer in a in a uh, highly pressured race. That was a very hard battle it had last time. Barbados Beauty again, uh, you know, looked like it battled all the way to the wire, and then that brings us to Devious Sister. This is a deep, deep closer. Okay. If we look at our acupressure, we see that it's the lone closer in the race, in a highly pressured race. Now, again, I've gone four deep on my line, so I want to see 15 to 1 uh, on this horse um, uh, to get involved. Otherwise, I'll just uh, stay out. But that's the kind of opportunity that you might find in some of the undercards. It takes some digging to find them. Let's look at the second day of Breeders' Cup. I, I've just, the juvenile turf sprint, I've just gone past because it's six and a half furlongs down the hill. Um, in the Santa Anita 4th that day, this is from November 2nd now, the Breeders' Cup juvenile. We've got Scandalous Act at the top of the line at seven to two. Now, this horse has just won its last three races in a row, so I don't know if the odds of getting uh, six to one or eight to one are very good on the horse. Um, Sweet Reason looks legitimate. Um, Artemis uh, Agroterra also, I mean, what are you going to do? It's two for two. Won a maiden, then won the Frisette, grade one. Um, Scandalous Act might go off at a decent price. One thing that I noticed about it, it's if you look in the acupressure, it owns the second call in an unpressured race. And the crowd is sometimes reticent about betting an early horse in a route race. So there you go. Um, uh, scandalous act. Yes, I'd like to get um, seven, eight to one uh, to invest. Um, if I do, I will. Uh, I notice it's another Calder, uh, getting a number from Calder. And sometimes they translate to the West Coast and sometimes they don't, which is why I'm going to be requiring a very good price on the horse. In the Sixth race, the Philly, I'm sorry, the fifth race, the Philly Mare Turf. We've got a big, big unknown, and that's this horse, Donk, uh, who's the 5-2 to two morning favorite, has no starts in the United States. I'm really not interested in parsing through the rest of this race, you know, with that horse that can take my money. I won't know why. The other horse that I'm, uh, the other race that I'm a little interested in is the Santa Anita sixth race from November 2nd, the Philly Sprint. The, right at the top of the line is this three-horse Starship Truffles. Now, it comes up as an unpressured race, which is unusual in a seven-furlong race, as this is. The acupressure, if we look, Star, Starship Truffles owns the second call. It's 15 to 1 morning line. Our line is 9 to 2. Contention line is 18 to 1. Morning line is 15 to 1. So... I don't know. The last two races, one at Saratoga, one at Gulfstream, it has, you know, kind of poorer numbers than its Calder numbers. And that's either because uh, the Calder numbers aren't translating or in the second back, it was jostled. In the top race, it was bumped at the start. So at a price, I'll bet that those numbers are going to hold up. <laughs> You know, that's the way you do it. It's really a guess. I can't say for sure. But if those numbers translate, this horse has a, um, a very good shot in this race. I also noticed looking at the primary pace column, you see this 94. That's huge in this field. But let's say I don't believe the Calder number. And I look at the primary pace on its very top race, which is an 88. Well, heck, that's really good. In fact, the top I think let's scroll down a little bit here. Yeah, it would 
put it right on the top. So if that does come out unpressured, if speed is holding up, uh, I would take a shot at this horse. Again, I'm going to need double digits and odds to bet it. And now we come to fun. Turf sprint, six and a half furlongs down the hill. The first three horses on layoffs. No, thank you very much. The Breeders' Cup Juvenile. The top horse, Havana, is got a huge gap over the rest of the field. This is another one of those. Broke its maiden. Won the champagne, a grade one. It's two for two. I don't want to bet it because it's going to be chalk. Don't want to bet against it. Next, the Breeders' Cup Turf, 12 furlongs. There are three unknown horses, horses that uh, haven't run in the country before or off long layoffs like Magician. How do I not bet a horse named Magician? Or uh, the Fugue, which is one of the morning line favorites. Um, I am done. Santa Anita 10th, the Breeders' Cup Sprint, usually one of my favorite races. However, in this race, there are seven horses above eight. Eight horses above random. So I've got to parse all of that. And what's even worse, from a value capping point of view, the top four are the four morning line favorites. So I'm done. And then if we say, well, it's highly pressured, maybe I can make something out of that. There are three closers to look at. Um, uh, uh, one of them is below random. I, again, am done. Sorry. Breeders' Cup mile uh, on, the, on the turf. Uh, the top two horses uh, look like they're going to be very well bet. Um, I don't, I don't have reasons, you know. I don't, I don't see a, a fantastic price lurking in this race. And finally, the Breeders' Cup Classic, you know, the one we all want to see. This again is a very speculative race in that uh, I have seven horses above random. Uh, the favorite, of course, uh, Game On Dude, who's been just you know, running gangbusters, won the Pacific Classic, the Hollywood Gold Cup, the Charlestown Classic. I mean, grade ones, grade twos, uh, six-year-old, um, six-year-old, but boy, it's running well. I uh, might take a speculative bet here because the top two horses that I have at six to one just came out of the Pennsylvania Derby. Um, one, the 10 horse will take charge, won it. And the four-horse Moreno um, finished second. So I, I might look to bet the long prices between those two. Take an exacta. I like taking the exacta boxed and then straight to reverse. In other words, the horse that lost last time, the four, on top of the ten, and then a box. So uh, I'm not thrilled about all the horses being there. And I do have to guess a little bit. Um, game on dude uh, even though the numbers you know come out that it's not the absolute strongest in the race um, you know there are so many horses to deal with uh, above random I, I I don't think this is a this is a bad speculation certainly for an exotic using those Pennsylvania Derby horses now there's another race that I found in the undercard that I'm a little interested in and that's the Parks Second race. Aha. See the difference? I only have four horses to deal with above random. Great. The top horse just came off a layoff and won its race, running its top number. And that's, you know, I know it's a three-year-old, so they can improve. The second one uh, looks like a very early horse. This is a highly pressured race. And now we've got a deep closer uh, in uh, distant islands. So you notice the odds line, 4 to 1, 4 to 1, 9 to 2, 5 to 1, very close. You can just um, pick among them. There's only one price in the race, and that's this distant island, 25 to 1, 10 to 1. It's a type 1, long story, but it, that means it might be coming to the race, and the crowd might not think so. And then we see in acupressure, this is a highly pressured race. It doesn't come up as a closer, the 6 and the 7 do, but if we go to position pointer, we see... The second call, position 49, closing to 31. And finally, uh, if we look at the late fractions in the race, the horse has uh, tied for the top late fraction. So I think that's going to be a real price win, lose, or draw. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. That's it for this edition of the Value Capping Video Rant, the 2013 Breeders' Cup edition. I want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for all your encouragement and your support. Those of you who 
uh, have Black Magic Ultimate Software and on the Wizards Forum. Thank you so much for supporting and assisting and helping one another. It's the greatest thing that I've ever experienced in my almost 30 years uh, in handicapping, value capping, and horse racing. So thank you. If you need more information about anything, go to our website, which is www.posttimedaily.com. Posttimedaily.com. You need to get in touch with me, have a question, want to let me know how you're doing. It's michael at posttimedaily.com. So until we meet again, this is Michael Pozzola saying, let the bet make you. I'll see you soon.